1,200 km motorbike trip all the way from Labuan Bajo to other side of Flores Island, visiting traditional village Verbo, hilly towns Rutang and Bajawa, and of course major point of interest Volcano Kilimatu. Left Labuan Bajo early in the morning and while driving popped up to the local school. The teacher of English was very friendly and welcoming, invited me to look around and introduced me to the kids. I know I don't teach it here, but English is important. Maybe you can tell to them how to speak English well. Okay, uh, do you want to introduce yourself to you? My name is Elfie. My name is Lisa. I'm 13 years old. I just said, no? There are many motorbike rental shops in Labuan Bajo, but none of them are offering manual or even semi-automatic bikes. My rental price was 75,000 Indonesian rupees per day, and it was quite a decent, well-maintained scooter. Flores Island population is about 2 million people, and it's the 10th biggest island of Indonesia. Even though most of Indonesians are Muslim, Flores is almost all Catholic, due to Portuguese and later Dutch colonization in 16th-17th centuries. Small local fish market from nearby village. Maria, Maria, Cristiana, Cristiana, nice to meet you. Even it's the only main road across the island, there is almost no any gasoline stations on the way. They are mostly located in the bigger towns only. Instead, you can see lots of local shops selling plastic bottles with gasoline for the scooters and motorbikes with smaller tanks for 15-20 thousand Indonesian rupees per bottle. The road to Werba was not easy to find. Google Maps and Maps Me were not entirely correct and I lost a couple of hours to find the right turn to the road. Leaving the motorbike down the hill, hiking is the only way to reach the village, which is located at 1,200 meters above sea level. The full hiking distance is 8 kilometers by the narrow path on the steep slope surrounded by humid jungles. You can skip 3 kilometers by having a lift by motorbike taxi provided by homestay down the hill. What I actually did is I arrived to homestay by 3 p.m. and I had no so much time left before the sunset. The rest of 5 kilometers took me a couple of hours to climb up. Werbo is a traditional village and the only one that still maintains the shape of traditional houses called Mbaru Nyan. They believe that cone-shaped house is a symbol of protection and unity among Werbo community and circular-shaped floor is a symbol of harmony and justice among the families living inside Mbaru Nyang. This is a local guest house and my sleeping place where I supposed to stay overnight. All Mbaru Nyang stand around an altar which is called Kompeng. It's a sacred place where they worship God and ancestors with sacrificing animals on some important religious ceremonies. Nian Gendang, the main house, has a diameter of 14 meters and inhabited by eight families.
The first floor is divided into two parts. Lutur, which is a single entrance exit door, and Motang is a private zone where a stove fireplace for cooking and dining, as well as the bedrooms of the families. Been generously offered a nice simple dinner at our guest house. There is no electricity, mobile connection or Wi-Fi in Verbo village. They have a generator that works for 4 hours, from 6 to 10 in the evening. Cooking and drinking water is taken from the river. In case if anyone is sick and needs to be delivered to the hospital, the people from the village are taking the patient all the way down to the hill on the stretches. Left the village at 6 o'clock in the morning. I needed to hit 8 kilometers down to the hill of hiking and 200 kilometers by motorbike. Half of the distance is going to be a damaged road again and another half is a twisty hilly road. We'll see how far it will take me. The Indonesian paddies were traditionally used to grow dry rice, but now are used for more wet farming. Your name, your name is your address and, and signet. 20 kilometers from root tank lies a unique site, rice field divided in the shape of a spider web. Related to traditional land use practices, segments of the pie chart were found by particular families. The bigger the family, the bigger the segment that be given to work. Passing by one of the villages saw a girl sitting under the tree playing guitar and singing. What a blast! Good morning, world. Good morning, all the creatures. Love start riding early in the morning and witness while everything is waking up. 250 kilometers from Barong to Moni for today, with one of the most beautiful roads I've ever ridden. In another scenic part of the road, 25 km drive along the Bluestone Beach, where volcanic black sand disappears under the colored pebbles. Local people around are mostly walk as rock miners for sale. They will sort the stones by shape, color and size. Later, stones would be sold to collectors and used as decorations of the walls, gardens and aquariums. So you can choose fists? Like this is barbecue. A barbecue good. The best place to stop for a lunch after a long ride is Southern Beach Cafe. A fresh big tuna barbecue together with veggies and rice for 50,000 Indonesian rupees only, and great view with unusual turquoise pastel blue stones pushing by the waves. Passing by Ende, the capital of Ende Regency, not so much to do in this city, but it's a good starting point where you can fly for a quick access to Moni rather than traveling across the island.
Ceremony is a small and relatively new settlement at the foot of volcanic Mount Kilimatu. It's been created as a base for the trips to the colored lakes of the volcano and has few nice lodges. I would have recommend Bintang Lodge with small but clean and cozy rooms with hot shower for 215 Indonesian rupees including breakfast. I'm be happy. Cynthia I'm is a friendly and welcoming owner who is happy to accommodate their guests. My first attempt to get to Volcano Lakes was 6 o'clock in the morning. Arriving to the entrance to the park, being told that it's cloudy and I'm unable to see the lakes. Came back to the village and while waiting for the sky to clear up, went to look around at a local Sunday market. My original plan was to visit Volcano Lakes at sunrise, but it was a heavy rain at night and dense clouds were still sitting at the top of the mount at my second attempt again. Just arriving down the hill, noticed a bit of stretch of sky between the clouds and eventually that was a good move to come back to the pond before the rain starts. Enchanted Lake and Lake of Young Men and Maidens are separated by a shared crater wall and are typically green or red. Lake colors periodically change due to adjustments in the oxygen reduction status of the fluid of each lake and also considering the abundance of the different major elements such as iron and manganese. Oxidation reduction status depends on the balance of volcanic gas input and rainfall rate. The lake of old people is usually blue and it's the westernmost of the three lakes. The colors in the lakes change independently from each other and has its own unique connectivity to the underlying volcano's activity. Left Volcano at noon and have 200 km of riding by hilly twisty roads to reach Bajava before the sunset. Bajava is the capital of Ngada Regency and it's the highest and the coolest town in Flores. It's located 1,500 meters above sea level and it's good for hiking and trekking adventures. There are many hot springs around Bajava and Mangeruda is one of them. The hot spring water is known having medical effects such as curing diseases, especially skin diseases, due to its temperature which is similar to therapy spas. While the temperature in the pool was unbearably hot, it's getting pleasant and the small waterfall coming out of the pool. The water contains sulfur and other volcanic minerals, giving wide spectrum of health benefits. There are two traditional villages located next door to each other at the very foot of Mount Enere. 
Lubu village is less famous and smaller, only five families live in there, and it has its own charm. They never moved, could be like 350 years ago. Bena village consists of two parallel rows of traditional high thatch roofed 45 houses, with nine tribes living there. Originally from Pati, a coastal settlement in central Java, the ancestors of Bena sailed to Flores 1050 years ago. Their ship was stranded on the southern coast of central Flores, and its deck became the neighborhood of Bena. And now the houses line up in the pair of curves in the shape of a ship deck. Due to forefathers' practice of polygamy, the people of Bena trace common ancestry. Men leave their parents' home to live with their wives' first families. If the first wife gives her consent to spend time in the homes of his other wives as well. To marry a woman in Bena, a man must first commit to a three years premarital service to his father in law and then present an offering of coconuts, chicken, bitter leaves and areca nuts to his wife's family. Among dozens of standing stones lies a large dolmen which resembles a dining table with a round basin in the center. On this dolmen the residents lift up their offerings of prayer to their ancestors. Tradition has it that Bena was built by Jean Dake, who carried magical rocks from nearby Mount Enere to erect the famous Neolithic altar in the center of the village. All villages are now officially Catholic and attend the local missionary school, tradition, beliefs and customs endure. Sacrifices are held three times a year, and village elders still talk about rigidly enforced caste system that prevented mixed relationships facing serious consequences. Lighting up the sky Like a light us on the ocean I bring you home Rotenk is a small town in the highlands and the capital of Mangarei Regency. You like Momere? It's famous for Dleambua or Hobbit Cave, a geological site located 14 kilometers to the north of Rotenk at the altitude of 500 meters above sea level. Dleambua is a limestone cave and in Indonesian it means the cold cave. It's yielded some of the most important finds in the modern anthropology. The remains of two hobbit people, as the media calls them, were found here in 2003. Homo floresiensis existed 12,000 years ago, possibly putting the species in contact with local Homo sapiens. They accomplished the same things as their larger Homo sapiens, such as making fire and hunting in cooperation with each other while being less than 115 meters tall and having brain approximately one-third of the size of Homo sapiens. There is a small museum nearby with a detailed description of the recent excavation. Finally, coming back to Luban Bajo, I had no any issues with the rental scooter for the entire journey of 1,200 kilometers, and would like to recommend this shop. Riding along the main street of Luban Bajo and passing by Mediterranean restaurant on the left side, 
Two houses later, you will see a rental shop with lots of scooters on the parking place nearby. Regarding accommodation, I stayed at Manta Manta Guest House. A decent clean room with a private bathroom and within walking distance from the main street. If you like this video, please subscribe to get notified of my future adventures.